Okay, so now we've uh, performed the two tasks that are on this screen. We're going to go ahead and click the green button at the bottom, confirm machine setup, because we're ready to go with that. Okay. Now what we want to do is uh, we're back to the main monitoring screen. So we go to start test stage. And now we, uh, again, step by step, start at the top, work your way down. Okay. The first stage is saturation cell pressure increment. Now, I really wish they would rename this stage because this stage is confusing to a lot of people. What it should be called is saturation B value check or B value determination. Because all this is, is again, remember when we set up the, so the testing parameters, we determined that we, our cell pressure increment steps would be 10 PSI. All this stage does is increase 10 PSI, monitor the amount of pore pressure, and calculate the B value for us. Okay? The, the next stage says saturation back pressure increment. What that, that's fine, but what that should really say is uh, saturation. It should say back pressure saturation uh, stage or something because that's the stage at which you actually apply back pressure if the B value is not high enough. Okay? So this gets a little confusing, but if you follow me, first check your B value, which is the cell pressure increment. If it's not 0.95 or higher, which is ASTM requirement, you go down to saturation, back pressure increment to saturate it. Then you go back up to the cell pressure to check the B value again. Once you've hit 0.95 or higher, you skip the set and then saturation and go down to consolidation. And we'll show that here in a minute. So the first thing you want to do is check the B value. What's the B value right now currently? So again, step by step. Step one, confirm your initial cell pressure. And that just takes readings from the bottom here. Our cell pressure is 0 0.08 PSI, which is essentially nothing. But if you notice, our pore pressure is not zero any longer, is it? It's 0.56. Well, the reason for that is because we have some hydrostatic pressure buildup due to the fact that we filled the cell with water. We have a little bit of pressure in there that's generated some poor water pressure, which is actually a good sign because that tells us that we're pretty, we're probably pretty close to saturation because it's increased that much over just filling the cell with no pressure on it. Okay. So the next step is step two, close cell pressure valve and back pressure valve. Cell pressure valve and back pressure valve, when you first start, are already closed, but I'll show you where they are on the cell. The cell pressure valve is here. It's the valve between the cell pressure transducer and the, and the cell itself. And the back pressure valve is here. It's the valve between the back pressure transducer and the cell itself. That's the back pressure valve. That's the cell pressure valve that the software is talking about in this, on the screen. When you first start off, they're already closed. Okay. So step two is already taken care of for us. Just wanted to show you where they were. Step three, adjust the cell pressure to 10 PSI. Why 10 PSI? Where did the software come up with that number? We told it that number. We wanted each increment to be 10 PSI of cell pressure. So how do we adjust the cell pressure to 10 PSI? Here's what we do. We monitor this transducer right here, which is reading from this transducer here. Keep the valve closed. We go over to the Triflex 2 panel. Cell pressure. Click your... Uh, Toggle switch to up to read on the pressure meter. Remember, this gives us a ballpark figure. What's on the screen gives us an accurate figure. <clears throat> Turn your regulator until you get about 10 PSI. Again, ballpark it. 9.7, 9.6, we'll get it up a little bit. Close to 10, 9.9. .9. Walk over to the screen and look and see what the value on the screen is saying. Now, if you notice, the value on the screen hasn't changed because I didn't change the valve to pressure. Now that I have, I'm looking at the screen here and it's saying 9.98 PSI. That's pretty close to 10. You want to do some fine adjustments to make sure you're right at 10 or very close. Being a little above 10 is okay in this case. It'll jump around for you for you a little bit too. The reason it's jumping around is because the tube, this nylon tube is uh, expanding. We have expansion going on throughout this from, from all the way through the tubing in the back 
the expansion of the plexiglass here, the expansion of the tubing. What we want to do is allow it, give it a little bit of time for equilibrium. You will get expansion here, and the pressure will change and, and oscillate a little bit until it finds an equilibrium state. <coughs> if you look at some old text, it'll tell you to allow this to sit for a few minutes to, to reach an equilibrium state of pressure. Because you have to get all of the components, um, if you want to do accurate testing, you want to get the components to to have a good stay state. See, right now we've uh, even moving this around here. We're changing the amount of pressure. So right at about 10, 10.03, which is just fine. So we'll go ahead and move on. So, but if we notice, the pressure is going to here and stopped at that cell pressure valve. It's reading at the transducer, stopping at the cell pressure valve. Step four says, after countdown, open cell pressure valve. Remember the countdown that we talked about earlier. The countdown is a number of beeps for five seconds and then a double beep at zero and right after the double beep, then you open the cell pressure valve. After countdown, open cell pressure valve, which is this valve here. And what that'll do is apply 10 PSI pressure inside the sample, the confining pressure, and monitor the amount of pore pressure reading change do a calculation, obviously the ratio between the differences of the two is your B value or saturation level. Okay. So we'll go ahead, hit continue, and that'll bring up another screen to say the test. Uh, we'll start after the countdown, so click the green button if you want to continue on. And open five, four, three, two, one, and then a double beat. Open the cell pressure. And now what that's done is I've opened the cell pressure valve and now we're monitoring the pore pressure and you'll start getting readings on, the, on both screens if you notice here. The one on the left is B value of 0.69. The one on the right is pore pressure of 7.51. Remember that was at 0.56. So it's pretty obvious your, your difference in your cell pressure is zero to 10, so 10 PSI. Your difference in your pore water pressure is whatever this value is, 7.7 .7 minus 0 0.56, which is about 7.2, which is calculated out to about 2.27 or 0.72, I'm sorry, um, uh, B value. So it's pretty obvious where those numbers come from, but it does the calculation all automatically for you. Okay. And here, uh, typically the B value um, only takes a few minutes um, to stabilize, but what you're waiting for here is a constant value. Okay. Um, it's still rising slightly. If you notice, we have the last reading of 7.82, but down at the bottom we have 7.89, so it's still changing. Okay. And I want you to notice too that the time is in square root minutes, meaning it's not taking the time every minute or every second. It's doing the square root of those. <coughs> okay. Now what I want you to also do during every stage is to make sure you monitor if there are any water leaks throughout the entire system. If you notice, there's a couple areas of water pooling around the bottom, but it's not continuously leaking. What that is, is that was just some water that was on the O-ring area on the outside of the O-ring that's squeezed out because we've applied pressure. But, it's, it, but watch those, and what I recommend you do is continue to monitor, clean them up and monitor them throughout the test, just to make sure that you're not leaking. But I'm pretty, I'm pretty confident we aren't. If you are leaking from this location, typically that's due to some debris that's on that O-ring, creating a path for the water to escape. You'll want to drain everything, start over again, remove that debris, and clean up that O-ring. Um, you want to check to make sure you're not leaking out of the, out of the bleed valve. You want to check and make sure you're not leaking out of any of the components that you've assembled on the cell. <coughs> okay, we're still rising here. So we're just, we're, all we're doing is sitting and waiting for this to equalize. 